got something special tonight for you. Probably many, not many of you haven't seen before. It's in Fred Osborne's book, A Picture, but I don't know there are many of these, these floating around. It's a Roden Schwartz uh, HF, VLF HF receiver. Uh, it goes from, it's a shortwave receiver. Model EK893. Um, and the unique thing about this is it has three, three separate radios inside that can be controlled from the front panel. Um, and they are independent of each other. Uh, there are some commonalities. But I wanted to, to hook this up. Um, obviously, three antenna, antenna put inputs are needed. So um, I want to show you how I've rigged my, my uh, network from a single uh, loop antenna out on the deck uh, through. Um, anyway, I'll come right here and show you. Forgive the mess, but it is it does make some sense if you know what you're looking at. The line in from the window to this is actually a DX Engineering uh, active loop, which is actually performs very well for me. And that runs into this, which is a Stridsberg uh, eight port HF multi-coupler. It's active and it has power to it. Like you see a little green light going. With this, it then goes into a, another Stridsberg. This is, is a passive uh, four port HF uh, multi-coupler and then the three inputs antenna one two, radio one two and three are all hooked in through that things to know about your network if you're setting up something like this is you need to know passive versus active um, in my radio room downstairs I have a radio input coming into this and from that it, it can go to four different multi-couplers at that point, you know, if it gets to the end and I want to power this thing up with three antennas, I can stick another one of those in sequence like I have here, and that will actually uh, that'll actually run the radio, and you get you can multiply your ports that way. Since it's active, it actually uh, um, so handles the signal. There's no loss or degradation or anything like that. Looking on the back of this, you see there's power supply and a lot of heat sink fans here. There's also a fan which is different from the other rodent sources I've had. Um, and of course you have your serial and um, various, various connection cables. And you have options and stuff down here uh, on each radio. This is radio one, radio two, radio three. Um, and you have your line out for the various three there too. So that's the kind of the back uh, and back end. I just do that to kind of illustrate what you can do if you or wanting to run more than one radio off of one radio in, in, input. So I'm sitting back down here. This is what the business end looks like. It's your typical uh, Roden Schwartz 890 series in interface. Uh, if you have an 890, 891, 895, 896, uh, the, the display is going to be very similar. The menu driven stuff is going to be very, very familiar to you. And, of course, the button selections and all that is that's all standard for what they do. Um, here you have the monitoring for the three different receiver one, receiver two, receiver three, um, and the loudspeaker, loudspeaker control. Um, so I'm gonna, it does a, a bite on boot. In other words, it goes through in cycles and checks all of them. You'll see the lights blink on and off and sounds and stuff. And then we'll start listening to the radio a little bit. Okay, as you see, we're on receiver one here. If I wanted to go to receiver two, I'll turn this down. Turn it down a little bit. If I wanted to go to, all you do is hit enter. And it brings up our one, two, three. And we're on one now, so I'm going to go to two. That's an AM station, maybe a TOP in Washington. I want to go to three, and her receiver three. And that's 7200 from the ham channel, which is was pretty active a second ago before I started doing this, but I guess they kind of come and go. Um, but you can do a lot of things with these. So let's go back to receiver one. Uh, let's go, let's just stay on. Oh, there we go, okay. Let's cancel that, go back to menu, all right. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the menu controls. There are things like bandwidth controls. You can bring it down. 
or up and down. Uh, there are a total of six different, five different bandwidth, six different bandwidths in this. You have uh, everywhere from eight kilohertz, you can see it here, six, 3.1, 1.5, 0.6, and 0.2. 200 hertz is the, the smallest filter there. Here on this one, you got a 3.1. And if you wanted to, if there was a noise outside it you wanted to mess with, you could actually go to BFO. You could also go to passband tuning. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry. Got too involved in it. Anyway, so you can do that. Um, one of the things to keep in mind was to give you a little background and history of this, um, since I do that on my, my shows. Um, this was produced between 1992 and 2012. Uh, this particular model was located um, in Europe, obviously, uh, in, in, a, in France, in Brit Brittany, France. Uh, it was actually probably something that came out of the Bre uh, French Naval Station at Brest, um, some good monitoring radio, but uh, I'm sure they upgraded their facilities and got this, this they didn't need this anymore. Um, this has, I've talked to several people who are, who are knowledgeable about the European scene and about Rode and Schwartz particularly, and this is only the second radio in 20 years or something like that, that uh, they've seen actually one, and the other one did not work. Uh, that was like 20 years ago. So this one, when I got it, was not working at all either. Um, well, it was working, but you couldn't select the radios from the front board like we just saw. Um, and it, the uh, one of the, the features board, the GM890 um, signal processing board that is attached to the Radio 1, uh, was, was not working properly. So uh, we had a, a Roden Schwartz technician go through this with a fine-tooth comb and ended up having to replace the whole backboard behind this the keys and everything like that, and replace the three buttons there just to make sure that everything was working fine. And it does. Uh, they did a great job. So uh, props to whoever that mysterious RNS guy is over there in, in Germany. But uh, you know, uh, did a good job. So came in and uh, yeah. So this is like super rare, I guess you might say. Um, the the, the all right the. 890 family, of course, you, you're familiar with the 890s and the 891s, which is a desktop form. Uh, 893 is a combination of three 890s. Uh, that's, that is the three 890s are inside there. And uh, 895, and then you have an 896, which is the DSP receiver. I've made videos on those before. Anyway, so the interesting thing about this is that there are... I will just say that some of the some of the features and just this is just my cursory using it. I've got the manuals, but they're in German, so I'm having to sl slog through that. Um, there are certain features that are that are controlled by the front panel and by the computer and CPU, and there are others that are individual to the radios themselves. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, most of them are most of the radios on the are, are they're all identical radios. Uh, one has additional um, the 890. Uh, the GM890 signal processor, which gives you some additional modes and things like that, some facts and some some of the teletype modes and digital modes and things like that. So that's kind of a special thing about this one too, is it has that installed and working. So um, show you how that works. I'll just go back down here and we'll go to. Oh, let's see. Let's go to menu and we go to. Um, system and yeah, see you see it's version version 4.01 okay and options this one which is three has no options this is how they come stock this is what you see if you got one without it without any kind of options to it okay so if i go back to menu and i go hit here and go to receiver two you see the same thing version 4.1 and no options okay so those are plain jane standard as they come which means your 
your filter selection, the six filter selections are independent of the uh, radio. The radio, you can control them from the panel, which will control the bandwidth of the radio, of the specific radio inside. But, you know, it's, you know, it's something that you, that if one of the radios went down, you'd still have the stuff. So that part of it. Um, so let's go to uh, receiver one. And this one is, this one's got a little bit different. It's got the same version. They're all three on the same version firmware and that kind of thing, which you would expect. But this one has FSK unit and XS, and it also has the IF converter, okay, and uh, FSK unit. Okay, so what that does, basically when I go into the, the difference in that is the modes. If I go to hit this one for modes, you see the typical AM, CW, LSB, USB. This one has FAX1, FAX2, FM, uh, FSK, AFSK, and F7B. Um, you have, a, whereas if you went to Radio 2 and you'd see the, the modes, you'd have FAX1 and no options. So it goes back to it. You'd have that. And that's the same way as the first one. So. When you start playing with this, it's 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 kind of fun because you do it's the, the radios all work the same, you know. The only thing is, uh, receiver one has additional you know, modes and features and things like that because of the eight, uh, GM eight ninety. I still haven't figured out all the stuff it does, but um, if you're doing digital modes, it looks like that's the one you'd want to be tuning in on. So. Um, I don't know how much room is inside these boxes either because they're pretty tightly packed. You obviously we think about with three radios all having separate cards inside this. And of course they're, they're kind of, they're very well shielded and all that. Uh, the GSM is a separate unit that goes in there, I think. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty full inside the box. And there go the, there go the fan in the back. So anyway, um, that's kind of like my first impression of the Roden Schwartz EK893. Um, very cool radio. Um, I know probably no people are going to say, well, I never, I'm never going to see one of those. Well, you might, you never know, but it's at least there's one that you can say is on the internet now, <laughs> which will, uh, which will, uh, you can say it actually exists and that I actually see a working example of that. So I just wanted to get that out to you guys. Um, yeah, I guess the other news on my end here is I am building up my radio room. I'm almost finished with it, so it's a matter of just uh, bringing radios down into it. Once I do that, I'll give you guys a tour of that, which I think you'll find interesting or intimidating or sickening or whatever. You can always tune out if you don't like it. But it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's kind of what I've always wanted in a radio room where you have everything right there and, and able to be used. So anyway, that's a promise for the future. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave them in the comments section. I try to respond to all of them. And I really appreciate all you guys on the channel. Uh, we've got 480 subscribers right now. So that, that just blows me away that there are that many people who care about shortwave radio and would like to see more content like this. So talk it up among your friends and maybe we can get to 500 before long. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Have a great one. Bye.